Well, over the last few weeks, we've seen my next guest dicing with death, karate chopping, and kicking her way out of trouble with a bevy of baddies. She's knee deep in more mystery and suspense at the moment because she's currently starring in Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None, which is at the Duke of York's Theatre. Definitely Dempsey's better half. A very big welcome for Glynis Barber. <laughs> Are you a great Agatha Christie fan? Um, no, no, I'm not really. <laughs> That's a good help seeing you're starring in one at the moment. Dempsey play. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in Dempsey and Makepeace, um, you are terribly English, of course, in that. But yet you come from South Africa, and indeed you didn't come here until you were about 18. Yes. How did you make the, the transition? I mean, how did you cope with the change of countries? Well, uh, Rome was talking about different planets, wasn't he? Well, when I arrived here, I found that I felt like I was on a different planet because it was, it was so different, and I was sort of instantly impoverished, living in a bedsit, trying to cope with London transport. And uh, it, uh, it took a little getting used to, the weather especially, because uh, I didn't see the sky for the first three years, which I found <laughs> a little depressing. Because of the success uh, of the series, obviously that did put you right to the, the top of the publicity stakes. Yes. How much of a toll did that take? Well, it, it took a lot of getting used to. You know, one moment you're an anonymous person walking along the street minding your own business and then the next minute everyone wants to know what you have for breakfast, what you're wearing and what you're going to be wearing. So uh, it, uh, it takes a little getting used to, but uh, it, it's fine. It was pretty intense when the, when the series first started. Did it put a big strain anymore. though on the relationship with Michael Brandon because obviously that was flaunted across the papers every day? Um, well, no, I don't think it put a strain on the relationship. It put a strain on me, just getting through the day, because there was one stage where um, I had no privacy, not for one minute of the day, because they were there at my home and at work, and, and I found that very claustrophobic. But, I mean, that's not the case anymore, and that was for a short period, and I don't know if anyone can quite get used to it, although I suppose the royal family have that quite a lot, and uh, I do feel sorry for them. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you see Michael quite a bit? Well, he's in L.A. at the moment. Uh, he flits back and forth, but I, I always see him when he comes back. Mm. Romantically? Um, no, we're really good friends, actually, um, which is nice. Mm. And, uh, and I think we always will be. And what about Hollywood? I mean, do you ever think you might go there and, uh, you know, try and get a series? Or? Well, um, I would like to be able to do films in America. Um, and I did spend some time in L.A. last year. I got myself an agent and, in fact, decided to stay. I rented a house, I moved in, I opened a bank account, got a car and everything. And then within a week, I was offered a Dennis Potter film here. So I was on the first plane back, and uh, I think my agent, that was about over a year ago, my agent's still waiting for me to go back there, but I haven't quite got round to it. I, I keep finding excuses. Well, then I'm a bit busy at the moment. <laughs> and even when I'm not working, I, I find an excuse not to. But I, I, I suppose I will spend a bit of time there. It's just, when you try America, you've got to literally go and sit there. You have to commit yourself to sitting and waiting for work. You have to sit for six months. And I'm not very good at sitting doing nothing. And besides, I mean, when you sit in there, there's nothing to do but shop. And I mean, I was broke after my holiday there, so I had to come back quickly. One good reason not to go back. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be Christmas, obviously, in London. Christmas 87 here. Yes, I'm in the play, so uh, I'll be working hard over Christmas. What will Christmas Day bring for you? I mean, literally, what, one day off? Well, I have two, which is most unusual. They, we've actually been given Christmas Eve off, compliments of the management, so that's rather nice. <laughs> well, I hope you have a lovely time. Thank you very, Thank you much, very much for joining us for our Christmas edition. Thank you. Glynis Barber.